So here's another problem, a good warm up for homework. Um, here's an ugly looking uh, Cartesian, two Cartesian integrals added together. And the claim is that if we convert this to polar, it's going to be much prettier and easier to do. And as always, like uh, this is very much like convert, like changing dy dx to dx dy. You have an algebraic input, you convert it to, to geometry, then you reconvert it back to algebra in a different way. So we're going to actually we need to figure out what the heck this region is, and then uh, just sort of do it from scratch in polar from that. So let's look at what happens. This says x is going from minus three to minus two, and as x goes from minus three to minus two. Um, y goes from 0 to root 9 minus x squared. Aha, so y equals root 9 minus x squared. That's going to be important. Well, that we can recognize as y squared is 9 minus x squared. Let me write that down. Equals 9 minus x squared. Or in other words, x squared plus y squared equals 9. That's a circle. Ah, that's a big clue that polar is going to be nice. So this means we're going uh, in a strip from x is minus 3 to minus 2. We're going from the x-axis up to the circle of radius uh, 3. OK, because that's 3 squared, of course. All righty. So that's interesting, and that's part of it. Now, from minus 2 to 0, notice that these minus 2s uh, link up. And so x is going from minus 3 to, to, to 0, but with different stuff going on in the two strips. Um, so if, when x is between minus 2 and 0, it's going between root 4 minus x squared. Ah, that's x squared plus y squared equals 4, or 2 squared. So that's a radius, circle of radius 2, the upper semicircle, in fact, because it's plus in front of these guys, to the circle of radius 3. The integrand is the same, so we would hope we could combine these into one single region in polar with just that one integrand. So what is that, what is that look going to look like? This one uh, is actually a little, little bit nicer. It's everything below the circle, the upper semicircle of radius 3, and above the upper semicircle of radius 2, from minus 2 to 0. And that minus 2 is exactly where that inner semicircle starts. And then now this makes sense, because this, the minus 3, is where that outer semicircle starts, and where it stops. So here's what it looks like. Um, oops. Looks like this. Here's that outer semicircle. Here's the inner semicircle. And what is the the first part? It's x going from minus 3 to minus 2. We've got the bottom is y equals 0, and the top is this guy. So it's the first part, if you imagine a line in here, I'm not going to draw it in. But if you imagine a line right in here, actually, let me draw that in. I think I can do that. Um, let me just add in x equals minus 2. That should probably work. It takes a minute because it's an implicit plot, and hopefully it's not getting too, too confused. Yeah, there we go. So the original, the first part, the first integral is this part, and then the second integral is exactly this stuff. x from minus 2 to 0, and y from the inner center semicircle to the outer semicircle. So it's really just a, a quarter annulus, the ring between two circles, but a quarter of it. And that is very nice to set up in polar. And so let's see if I can just leave that on the screen. So we can look at it. Oh, wait. OK, there we go. OK, so there's that picture. Um, yeah, I can't get it too well on there. OK, so now there's the picture. So this, this integral now is going to be equal to, OK, when we set it up in polar, theta is going to be going from pi over 2 to pi. And r is just going to be going from 2 to 3. And the integrand, now let's see, we need to convert the integrand as well. x squared minus y squared, that's r squared times the quantity cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta r dr d theta. OK. So it was r squared cosine squared, r squared sine squared, and I just factored it out. Now we want to use our trig identities here to realize that's nice and try to do this as efficiently as possible. One thing, well, let's use trig identities real quick, and then I'll observe another thing that's very nice about lots of multiple integrals. So we've got an r cubed, and then cosine squared minus sine squared is just cosine 2 theta. OK. Um, if you guys are weak on these, that's, this is the time, <laughs> definitely the time. We're going to get a lot of trig integrals, big surprise, because we're doing polar coordinates. 
and we're going to do spherical coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. They all have cosines and sines. Brush up on your identities. So here's a nice situation, which I don't think I've mentioned before. I've got an integrand. It's a little bit of a generalization of something I did say. I've got an integrand that's a function of r times a function of theta, and then dr d theta, and the inner integral limits don't mention theta. So what can we do with that? What I can do is I can take out this cosine 2 theta, and that's, as far as the r integral is concerned, it's a constant. So that's going to be this outer integral. And I'm just going to put the cosine 2 theta there, because that's a constant as far as that inner integral is concerned. And then I'm going to put in the brackets that we don't usually need anymore, but they're always sort of implicitly there. And that's r cubed dr. OK. And then um, d theta. And then I'm going to do the same observation again. Because these limits, the 2 and the 3, don't involve theta, this is just a number. In principle, and mo a lot of the time, most of the time, it can actually be a function of theta. That as, like, like I like to say, as the radar beam sweeps across with the different thetas, you're going to get different answers. But here, I don't get a different answer. It's very, it's radially symmetric. And so that guy pops out. And so I'm going to get the integral from 2 to 3 of r cubed dr. Let me put it in brackets just to make sure we know uh, it's kind of disappearing here, sorry. Let me put it in brackets to know so we realize it's separate. Times, another thing in brackets, and I'm just going to take this guy. Uh, copy and paste, that's a really smart thing to do. That's faster, isn't it? And so this is a very general procedure. And it doesn't have anything to do with polar coordinates so much. It works in x and y or whatever. It's things about iterated integrals in general. If the integrand is a product of a function of one variable times a function of the other, and they don't mix, and if the limits are constant, so in um, in Cartesian, that would be a rectangle, only a rectangle. Here, it's only this kind of annular or circular kind of region where it works. It just becomes the product of two, two one-dimensional integrals. It's not a huge thing, but it can be a really nice simplification. OK, so um, let's not worry about that for a second. Let's worry about the cosine 2 theta equals, I'm just putting a question mark, times, OK, well, that's going to be 1 half sine 2 theta. evaluated from, oh, that's not what I wanted, pi over 2 to, to pi. And guess what? Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 2 pi is 0. And it's 0. And it didn't matter what the r integral was. That's why I put a question mark, because it's 0. Whew, that's interesting. That is not something that would have been obvious from the, um, the Cartesian presentation. If you'd left it in Cartesian, these guys would have got given um, messy, messy answers. They would have added up to, to be 0, but it's not at all obvious why they would add up to be 0. So let's think about whenever you've got an integral being 0, um, you want to go back and say, could I have done that in a slicker way? Very, very often, the reason you're getting an integral equal to 0 is cancellations out from symmetry, an odd kind of symmetry. So let's look at what we had here. And actually, let's go back. Let's put in even an intermediate step. It seems a little, It's going to seem a little weird. It's going to be half polar, half Cartesian. Um, it's, let's put, leave this as x squared minus y squared. And it's not so much, the polar is, here is not so much um, important for the setup and the integral. It's, it's just a nice way to remind ourselves of this is a very nice, pretty region when we put it into one piece. It is a semicircular, or a quarter circular, or a quarter of an annulus, what I, what I should say. And look at what this integral is. x squared minus y squared. That's something that if I flip x with y, or x with minus y, or any flip like that, you're going to get the same, you're going to get opposite answers. So here, down there, in this region, for example, x squared is big, and y squared is small. Here, x squared is small, and y squared is big, you're going to get the opposite answer for those guys. So geometrically, if you flip around this axis, y equals minus x, that exchanges x squared and y squared. And so there's going to be two pieces, one up here where you're going to get negatives, where the y squared is bigger, and one down here, and they're going to be separated by the, the 135 degree line, the 3 pi over 4 line. And um, those are going to cancel out. And so in fact, there I did set it up purposely in this way so that, that we get a symmetrical cancellation. Um, that's something that we have a chance of seeing in this presentation 
and we wouldn't have much of a chance of seeing here because this region here, that's certainly not symmetrical, and this region's not symmetrical. If we insisted on keeping these separate, we could never use any kind of symmetry argument, and we couldn't use any of the simplifications um, that are presented when we, when we use polar. Okay.